you happy to be free this morning? Yes. Oh, it's good to be free in Jesus. Yes. Let's pray. Dear God, we want to thank you for your freedom. We want to thank you for your grace and your mercy. We want to thank you, Lord, today for the presence of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Anoint us now. Bless us. Fill this space with your presence. And give us, Lord, your double portion today. As we settle this service, that all those who are here who have not yet surrendered will come all the way and give their heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless us. Protect us. Allow your guardian angels to surround this tectorium. Lord, send your angels with exceeding strength and anoint us, Lord, with your blessing so that your will must be done. Oh, Lord, release the shackles today. And if there's any darkness lingering in this day, Lord, root it up with your spirit. Root it up with the mighty power of Jesus. Lord, we pray for the portion of the Pentecostal fire of the upper room. Fill us now, Lord, and anoint us so that we can have our Holy Ghost time in your hallow name. Bless us, forgive us, and give us the good day today, we pray. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Yeah. As I guess you can hear right now, the enemy is want to mess with my voice. Uh -huh. I kind of lost it between last night and this morning. I don't know where it is, but that's called to bring it back before we finish. Oh, amen. <clears throat> Happy to be here today. Uh, the manager was telling me I keep missing to introduce my wife. <laughs> I did it two times before. Yeah. And each time I do it, she has me to step out and she gets the book again. Uh, uh, so those who don't know her won't see her. I describe her, she is gesh unctuously beautiful. <laughs> and she's a good fellow, so she's wearing yellow. And she's in the house today with us. Um, with me, my daughter, yes, Sally. Yeah. Um, she has her mommy talent. I see. And of course, she is Hans, good looking like I am handsome. <laughs> Also, with me, my sisters and my family, we have my two grand folk here. The Nika is my granddaughter. You can stand my three. Yes. The Nika. Amen. Daniel, he's in hand, and he's a guy. He gets blamed for everything. <laughs> so these days, when a glass is broken, he says, Daniel, break it. <laughs> you can't talk back, so he gets all the blame. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. The thing is, our, our, our elder daughter, what they call a stepdaughter, but she's my daughter. Leandra, she's with us today. She's coming back to the Lord the good and that's happy. Amen. And my wife gets left for a seat. I'm happy to have here today. I understand that um, our pastor McCall is here with us. Yeah. His church director, person, minister, um, minister, secretary. Great, great pastor. Um, yes, uh, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Yes, good to have you, sir. And his wife is with him today also. God bless you, sir, and welcome back to the tent. Pastor McCollum, yes, is a very good gentleman. I told you, if you want, don't make him money, check him out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And when I went to Dominic, I was broke, and I told him, Pastor, I want to get hold of Pastor Torn, but I spoke to him. I still going to Dominic. I said, okay, by the way, I got $1,000 here. I'm happy to give him, because there was no money until I got to Pastor Torn. <laughs> so God is good. Also, with us today, ladies and gentlemen, the very good man, he's uh, the, the newest. Executive Secretary in the Caribbean Union. He's fresh, he's good looking because of his wife. <laughs> when he married his wife, he's not so good looking, but you see, when you bring the two joined together, the, the, the good lookingness exceeds that, that, that ugliness, and today he's handsome in Jesus. I'm happy to introduce my friend and the new Executive Secretary of the East Caribbean Conference of Seventh Adventists, the hardworking man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Pastor Colin Torn to the podium. Pastor, please come and get a very a blessing. Uh, as we go forward today, right, come on, Pastor, right. say a word or two. I'm in trouble today, you know. I, I guess they interfere with, 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 with the top grass. <laughs> God bless you, Pastor. Give a word. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on now. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. Oh, I probably came in a little late, but uh, when I came in, I realized that the folks weren't. Um, as comfortable as they should be. 
So if you have not introduced yourself to the person seated next to you, do that right now and say something nice. Say something nice to the person next to you. Say something nice to the person next to you. Don't just say anything, say something nice. Some people have to go to the Bible to say something nice. Amen. Now after you would have said something nice to that person, give that person a hug in Jesus' name. Amen. Hug that person and say pleasant Sabbath, happy independence, and say God love you. And I hug you with a camera. Pleasant Sabbath, happy independence. I say whenever God's people come together, it's a big celebration. Somebody needs to say amen. Amen. Whenever God's people come together, it's time for God's people to celebrate. Are you with me? Yeah. Now some folks are waiting. They're not celebrating on earth. They're waiting. Had it not been for Jesus, we wouldn't be here. Are you with me? Right. I'm so happy to be on the pulpit, on the platform with, with Mr. Evangelist himself. You know, um, Evangelist Lindsley Boyne is an outstanding evangelist, not only in the East Caribbean Conference, but um, in the Inter-American Division. He was, he was awarded one of the outstanding evangelists in the Inter-American Division in wow. Panama in 2010. Amen. Amen. He's been the leading lay evangelist in the East Caribbean Conference for a number of years. And even this year, he was um, awarded that distinction by the then Personal Ministries Director. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's you. And uh, I think it was last month. Last month he was asked to come to the come to Trinidad, to the headquarters of the Caribbean Union. It's this month. Right? The days are running very quickly in my head. And um, the president and the administration of the of the Caribbean Union acknowledged him and awarded him as one of the outstanding evangelists, lay evangelists, in the Caribbean Union. I want us to put our hands together for outstanding evangelists, evangelists, ladies and gentlemen. I know he has given his all in this campaign, as he so often does. I want us to ask ourselves a question. As he gave his all, leaving St. Lucie, and coming up here night after night, Sabbath after Sabbath, he gave his all. God gave his all. Have you gave, given your all? Have you invited someone? Have you been persistent enough to work with someone to encourage them to come to this campaign? Or have you been just a spectator? <laughs> it's good to celebrate victory, but have you shared in the victory? Or were you a spectator when things were happening? Many times we have all kinds of excuses. We're too old, we're too sick. We don't know enough, and yet we can talk about days of our lives. <laughs> we can talk about the bold and the beautiful. beautiful and we have so many things to, to talk about but just to talk about Jesus to somebody we find it so difficult True. today is a celebration for those who have given their lives to Christ and those who will can you share in that celebration or is this another year that you have not witnessed or testified of the goodness of God Ask yourself some questions. And ask to, uh, after asking the questions, I want you to answer them. The mantra for the East Caribbean Conference is everyone is valued. A better person, a better member, a better church 
and a better conference. In other words, each and every day, we should be growing and getting better and better and better. I want you to turn to the person next to you, look them in the eye, and say, I desire to be better. Look them in the eye. I desire to be better. Because that's every Christian, that's every person's hope and intention. To get better and better and better and better. I always quiz myself by asking my wife certain questions. You know, I like to evaluate myself um, in, through her eyes. I always ask her from time to time. Um, am I improving as a husband? Oh. Am I improving as a lover? <clears throat> He's there calculating how, you know, those questions that he asked his wife. <laughs> you know, we have to evaluate ourselves so that we can become better in Jesus. Amen. So that we can grow in Jesus. Not that we are, you know, trying to, you know, see how perfect we are. But we want to grow to the stature that God would have us to be. In our relationships, in our families, and in our Christian walk. I pray God would continue to bless us as we celebrate and worship him today. As we listen to evangelist Lindsley Boyd. May God bless. Thank you, Elder Pastor Torn. Uh, quite good gentleman, hard working, and I was able to really um, mature on his leadership as personal ministry director. I do hope that continues now. He has a bigger office. <laughs> in, in Jesus' name. Today, don't try to run from God. Can't happen, yes, don't try it. And my wife is not feeling well today. She has a, a, a funny shoulder, so please pray for her as we continue today. It was around the 8th century BC, around 785 BC or so, that Jeroboam II was on the throne. And at this time, God had a message for a wicked city and the Bible tells us, as you go to our Bible immediately, all on the Jonah chapter 1 and verse 1. I'm happy to say I'm really I enjoyed myself there. Um, of course, the pastor says a lot of stuff I want to say, and that's very good. Um, I enjoy the leadership of the pastor and, 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 and the entire church. I think the prayer warriors are very exciting and love to work with them, um, Sister Hunt and her team. And I'm happy um, to say that there, there are few many places that persons with master's degrees will do some service. Mm. So you have people here very humble. Yeah. We have a farm, we have pass, BCC. You don't do anything in church, but I guess we have trouble. <laughs> So to be some service and have a degree where you come from, it, it, it's almost a miracle. Yeah. I'm happy to see young people out here have been qualified, but they still would do anything that God calls on them to do. Yeah. And let the promotion man say, I said this morning to see um, the son is the manager. I'm telling the father what to do. Yeah. I tell Terry, work it. <laughs> if you call any resistance, you call me for another deal with him. Make sure you're working until he gets home, he gets fall asleep. <laughs> the Bible says in Jonah chapter 1, verse 1, let's all read together. Hmm. It says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, yes. the son of Amittai, saying, Say, Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's happy to hear a word from God. Yeah. It's good to hear a word from all kinds of folk, but when the word comes from God, it is exciting. It is beautiful. Huh? Don't you think it's special to know that God lets at least heaven and come to give you yourself a personal word. 
What a beautiful thing to hear the voice of God one to one telling you what he wants for you to do. I'm happy this morning that God still speaks to us. Yeah. He still talks with us. As a matter of fact, there are folk who are promised today to have had already to actually hear the physical voice of God. Oh, what a beautiful thing. I hear voice, I hear God's in, in sense of, of my conscience. I have never uh, heard the physical voice yet. Thank you, my brother. But people are privileged to that. And Jonah was privileged because the Bible says the word of the Lord came unto Jonah saying, I'm sure this morning, my friends, the Clico policy holder will love to hear a word from Clico. <laughs> yes, sir. I can't hear a word. Word. The folk who got messed up and mad off will hear, let you hear work from mad off. Stanford, the folk he took the money from, they will love to hear a word from him. Yeah. But none of them can be found to hear work. Amen. But thank God this morning, our Jesus is alive. Amen. And once he's alive, you will hear a word from him. Yeah. A mother of God, for the last promise, God has been telling me what to tell you. Right. So all those who get vexed, don't get vexed with me. Don't get vexed with Elder Pastor Thorne. Get vexed with Jesus. Right. Because what God says, I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. It may be rough and tough, but once God says it, oh, I'm going to do it. All right. It is good to hear a word from God. A matter of fact, Romans chapter 2, verse 13 tells us, as you move it from a story a bit, you have the test before. Yes, my brother. Yes, guess what? Come on today. Romans chapter two, two. two, verse thirteen says, "God says." Mm -hmm. It says, "Let's read together." For not the hearers of the law are just, are just. The law, mm. but the doers, the doers of the law shall be justified. So God is saying, when you hear the word, when you hear my word, my commands, my laws. I don't only want you to hear, I want you to obey. Yeah, that's right. Because we're here at the laws, and it's good. But God prefers the doers. And I'm saying today, we must be doers in Jesus Christ. God wants to hear the doers, want to see the doers do it. Let's go, my friend, the word is sweet. Job chapter 23, verse 12 tells us, Job says the word of God is so sweet, this is how he talks about it. He says, let's read together. Neither, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. Oh, yes. I have yes. seen the like words word. of his mouth more, more than, than necessary food. Mm -hmm. huh? So if Job is saying today, I prefer to put down the food and take up the word of God. Yeah. The word is more important than necessary food. Mm -hmm. So when you don't get food, you don't complain. Once you got the word, you got the best thing. Amen. The word of God today. Oh, my friend Jeremiah, chapter 15 and verse 16, the Bible tells us in respect to the word, it says, Thy words word, were found, and I did eat them. I hid them, I, I ate them. Yeah, and I and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing Person. of my heart. Oh, yes. For I am called by thy name, O God of hosts. So Jeremiah said, my friends, the words were so sweet, he ate them mm -hmm. and hide them in his heart. Mm -hmm. I thank God for the word. Yeah. The word is just too sweet. Yeah, I don't know about you, but sometimes I love to move the word because sometimes all I have in my pocket is but mm -hmm. But because I have the word, I look as though I've just eaten a five-course meal. The word has him looking good mm -hmm. and bright mm -hmm. and sweet. Yes, That's why Jesus tells sitting on the mount and the wilderness, sorry. Man shall not live by bread alone, somebody had my hope, but from the every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. Yes, so you see me? I am bread, 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 but the Lord good because I'm moving with the word. Amen. 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 It's not the brown here. <laughs> It's the word. Right. Once you got the word, you look good. A matter of fact, my jacket is cheap. Mm -hmm. But a lot more expensive than the executive secretary. Right. <laughs> because I got the word. 
Yes. Huh? Yes. And God has a way of making it look bright and sweet. Yes. The natural stuff. Amen. I wish you for but don't have this. I can't work at this. I work as my lungs. <laughs> but it's the same suit. Because it's not the suit. But it's the man in the suit. Yes. So once they got the word, anything will look bad. Yes. When, when, when we were in Panama, I want to talk about uh, I, I had a couple of US dollars, not much. And then I I I I, I run into they, they took me to a mall in between or visit to this mall and when they got to the mall, the mall looked like here shopper. Oh, no. And something tell me you can't shop here. <laughs> but the other guys who were there were men of financial stability. <laughs> They were so sound, they had cash, a hard car. A fella pushed the car in the little hole and the car said, How much money of this 8,000 do you want? <laughs> I pushed my car down, but it worked. I pushed my car, the car said, You can push your car here 8,000 times, there's no money. <laughs> so they were two kind of cars. One had 8,000 dollars and one had 8,000 times. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. So we go to the small, I mean, we got to leave it, and the guys going around, going around, and we find this store, store a little expensive, and there too began to say things in here real tight. But then the spread to me walk on, and these guys walk around, they went left, the spread lead me right. The spread always lead the right. And they go right and right, and they went all the way into the back of this mall, and they put up in the store. It designed like Kia Shepherd, but the price is like S.W. Adams. <laughs> That is my story. Oh, hallelujah. I begin to shock. And, and God was so good. God was so good. I couldn't speak Spanish. And before you know, a lady came who could speak Spanish and English. And she told me, since you're around them, I be your personal aid. And I had an aid shopping. I said, put that in. Put that in. Hmm, what is this? Yes, yes. And I had a shopping. I shopped so well. All to the store of grams and stuff. And the brother went past them, they got back to them. They went back to, to, to the shuttle. And we had to get back to church. But I take my time shopping because this is going to happen again. <laughs> and when they got there, they were locked, vex, vex, vex. But that their business. They're looking for the care shepherd. I found my as my as my Adam. And I am moving up until I done shop. <laughs> 40 US dollars give me some good stuff in the name of Jesus. I buy bag, shoes. My daughter was in the court and pray, I buy a white shirt for school. When I come out of school, I had a white shirt. I thought, I get a pack of white shirt for two US dollars. It had infinity. Yes. <laughs> That's why when you've got the word, God will show you the blessings. Yeah. You see, God knows I was broke, so he sent me to a broke store. <laughs> huh? God knows everything. The Bible said the earth. And the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So you have to hold on to the word. Some folk receive when they get pressure, they respond differently. Some folk cry, some folk curse, some folk blaspheme. But the more pressure comes, my friends, they've got to praise the Lord. Amen. Like Pastor Tom told you earlier, they've got to praise the Lord despite what the situation Let's go forward. The Bible tells us in Amos chapter 8, verse 11 and 12. The word is so important. The Bible says, God is saying, it's soon going to occur. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. Suffer, Lord. Lord. I will send. That I will send a famine in the land. What kind of famine? Not a famine of bread. Not a bread. Nor a thirst for water. Turn the water back. But, but for hearing, hearing the word of the, the word Lord. of the Lord. The famine is soon coming. Yes. And I think last week also the barbarous water authority strike. Everybody was saying we will soon go water. So they had the Barbados World Authority and the Barbados Worker Union. They had WWA, BWA, and BWU. So they should be family, they should be calling so. <laughs> All is BW. <laughs> and folk were saying they could water, but God is saying a famine is coming not for bread, not for, water. not for water, but for the word of the Lord. Plus, when you have it, you're going to lose it now. So, verse 12 says, and they shall wander from seagulls to seagulls. That's from north point to east point. Seagulls to seagulls. And from the north to the east. They shall run to and forth, seek to seek the word of the Lord, 
God shall not find it. Amen. So now today you have the word of the Lord obey because coming soon there will be no more word. Yeah. They can't find it. So my friends, get on board today. Soon coming. So when Jonah heard the word from the Lord, it was excited to go back to our story. Jonah chapter 1 and we're going to go to verse 2. What the Bible says today, Jonah chapter 1 and verse 2. So what God told Jonah and verse 2 says, Arise, Arise. go to Nineveh, mm -hmm. that great city, that great city, and cry against it. Oh, yes. Their wickedness has come up before me. Before me. So God's command to Jonah was to go to Nineveh. Yes. And God was clear on where he was sending him. I go to Nineveh, that great city. It was great, a large city, a heavy city with tremendous business and commercial activity. And cry against it for their wickedness. Mm -hmm. So it is two characteristics that Jonah Shui was doing. It was going to a large city and it was wicked. And no, most times, most times, large cities are wicked. And their wickedness has come up before them. Yeah, Some of you hit Jonah very hard, but mm. all cities are too wicked. The beast is not going to be. He's born in a wicked city. And some folk have come up with all this little uh -huh, to do a piece of the work. Mm. Don't tell me how you know I was up here, and they see you want to come. <laughs> Just the hands, man. Sorry, did not recognize you. You look so young today. <laughs> huh? There's some congregations only four turn up from it, and that's not good enough. God don't let that kind of behavior. God called on us to do a work. We must do it before it is too late. And my friends, we must come and go to the cities. I was in a particular program one time, and they said the tent had to be X place. And then they had this big meeting. They said they're not going there anymore because the last person that went there is a hard city. The people are hard. They don't move. And then they go going there again because the last past, the last person that preached there, only one person got baptized. I asked them, is the person still in church? Yes. It was a successful crusade. 100%. Yes. Successful. Yes, sir. Because the person is still in church. Yes. You see, we can't work with numbers only. We got to work with sustainability and durability. And I'm saying, what does that have to do with me and Jesus? I don't know who went there and what they did before. If God told us to go there, to go there. Yeah. So while they were sticking out a new spot, I went on the spot and started cleaning up for Jesus. Mm -hmm. I tell the workers, why is they sitting in that spot? Kill that spot for me to get So they found another spot and they went there by pressing on the same spot. <laughs> and lo and behold, God bless it because God knew that is where he wants us to go. And 34 people got baptized in the name of Jesus. So don't move when God tells you to come. Go. Because God knows what he has in store. And Jonah was to cry out against the city. And ladies and gentlemen, when you're dealing with God, what God tells you to do, you better do. Jonah was not called to carry a soft message. He was called to cry out against their wickedness. And today, the order is the same. God wants us up here to cry out against any wickedness in these communities. To the day, and for the last four weeks, we've been crying out against doubt, unbelief, witchcraft, self exaltation, insecurity, warning, nervousness, procrastination. There's some folk who heard the word. They want to come, but they're procrastinating. I'm saying today, when the word is called, when the altar is called, come forward in the name of Jesus. All right. We are here to go against suicides. Yes. Not before in our history have so many people commit suicide. Yeah. In small Barbados, some place that's supposed to be a paradise. What will a young man hang himself? Somebody leave somebody and somebody jump shit. Not me. I love Sister Bowen Derby. I commit suicide for nobody. How you like to live? Especially in Jesus. 
Yeah. Let me literally you have the same thing don't she will not to mess with it for me. Yeah. You have your life, keep it. Yes. God gave your life because he knew that he can do something good with it. Yeah. I will be pain against bitterness, impatience, anger, hatred, lies, deception, death, hypocrisy, lust, incest, incest, lesbianism, homosexuality. Huh? And how can two men kiss and say, love you, I don't know yet? <laughs> Pornographic material. And these days, the animals are not even safe. Bestiality is on the rise. Oh, help the animal, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and they was telling me that on the radio, that the fact that donkey talk is on it. The donkey's going to swing and start talking again. I said, here he comes again, let's go. Give up, give up, give up, give up. Only the animals alone. And I'm saying today, we must come and preach against this stuff so that men and women can give their hearts to Jesus Christ. Let's, I'm going to show you one more time. I'm going to go to Proverbs chapter 1. And see if you disobey the word of God. Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 24 or so to 33 to the end. This is what God is saying to them. Proverbs chapter 1. And we go down to 33. Let's hear, let's see. When you disregard the word of God, when you refuse to come to Jesus, what happens? It says, Because I have called, I have called, refused, and you refuse. I have stretched out my hand, yes. and no man regarded. No man regarded. But you have set at naught all my counsel. All your counsel. And with none of my reproof. Yes. I will I also will laugh at your calamity. Calamity God's I will, I will mock when, when you fear come out. Come out. So God is saying, if you refuse to accept me, if you refuse to warm my heart, when I sort it out, when your calamity comes, I will laugh at your calamities. And will mock when fear comes your way. That is God not going. Hmm? It's coming the time when God will want to help you. A population will be close. Hmm? It's, it's God just over people in church and for of the church. They can't be a church dressed nice and do all these wrong things they want to do. It ain't working. Turn some says man. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your, and your destruction, destruction cometh as a whirlwind. whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, yes. then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. I will not answer. They shall seek me seek early, me. but they shall, shall not find me. Find me permission, Lord. For, for that they hated knowledge yes. and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Go forward. Verse 30. They were none of my counsel. They despised Spice. all my reproof. My reproof. Therefore, Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, own way. and be filled with their own devices. Oh, see what's business. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. So even the simple is going to destroy you because you refuse to hear from God. But said, but God gives the the, 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 the the other side, the side you should follow today. He says, but whosoever hearken hearken unto me shall shall very simply. And shall be quiet and shall be quiet of from the fear of the devil. And that's people today, my friends. God knows the devil is on the root. And he wants to save you from him. But you must come to Jesus. And that's the real awesome promise. God giving us the ability to stand up against Satan himself. That's right, that's right. No other way you can fight the man. Mm-hmm. You must fight him. With Jesus, because he's gonna come after you. He's gonna turn you upside down if you fight on your own. But today, Jesus wants you to fight on his side. Yes, sir. And you must come up today when the call is made and give Jesus a chance in your life. The reason why your life has not been going well, you need Jesus in your situation. Mm-hmm. You need Jesus in your vessels. Yes, man. Huh? Mm-hmm. That's right. Need Jesus. You can call him anytime. Morning, noon, or night. Or Jesus never slumbers or sleep. Yes, sir. So you want a politician, you see, he's not here now. Mm-hmm. Only thing in office said, no, you know. Yeah. Or say he's away. Or he's tired. But thank God, our Jesus never slumbers. Mm-hmm. Which means he's always available to us 24 7. 
But in order to get that hook up with him, you gotta come to him today and serve him now before it is too late. Too late. So Jonah had a mandate to go to the neighbor. What cost story? A mandate. Did Jonah follow? Did Jonah obey? The Bible tells us in verse 3 of Jonah 1. And it says, But Jonah rose up. He rose up. So he obeyed the first part of God's rights. Yeah. Huh? So he obeyed that part. It's very good. Mm -hmm. Right. Rose and the pastors of rights, right? Yes. Yeah. God told him, right? So he rose. Mm. <laughs> See? <laughs> and what he did? Rose up to flee unto Tarshish. Tarshish. But God didn't go to the Lord. Yeah. But he goes to Tarshish. Huh? Well, from, from what? From the presence of the Lord. From the Lord. And, and he went down to Joppa. To Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. To Tarshish. So he paid the fear thereof. Thereof. And went down into it. Into it. To go with them unto Tarshish from the presence, the presence of, the of the Lord. So what craziness? Who will want to go from the presence of the Lord? Jonah did. And anybody who hears the call of Jesus and refuse to come, you are doing the same thing that Jonah did. You are going opposite to what God said. So God says, come to me, come to the altar, accept the blood of Jesus, the commandments of Jesus, and the baptism of Jesus, or you turn around and go back. It's just like Jonah. And he knew what he was doing because the Bible said that he said he was going from the presence of the Lord. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, the closer to Jesus, the better you are. Yeah. When you're too far away, it doesn't work. No. Huh? That's why you have to live a certain way decent because emergencies always occur. And when the trouble comes, I can call on him. Yeah. I can call on Jesus. Yeah. In time of trouble, he's a very present help in trouble. Yeah. I'm talking about Jesus. Yes, sir. Oh, praise the Lord today. Yeah. Hmm? But Jonah goes opposite. And some of you fall here are going opposite. Nineveh with east. And Tasha west. Away from God. And watch it. The more you move from God, the further you go down. Mm -hmm. He went from God for that. He went down to Joppa. Yes. And he found himself going down to Tasha. Mm -hmm. And he went down and he said, mm -hmm. Down, 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 down. Mm -hmm. Once you start a downward spiral, you go down because that is Satan tactic to get you stuck, like I said last week, in the cycle of him, his, his cycle, and you only go down. Satan still today, my friends, is, is telling this sort of desire in the hearts of mankind a desire to go opposite to God. Whatever God says, they do the opposite. I'm a sin today, my friend, I'm sin today. That is why. Jesus went to Calvary. And he wanted Jesus to get down from Calvary. And matter of fact, he told Jesus on the cross, Jesus, get down. You save sinners, save yourself. But God was smarter than him, you see? You see, when Satan got capable of heaven, and they recognized that sin was entering him, God called the go ahead to this meeting. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The point I know our business language, the president, executive secretary, and the chairman. So me and Pastor McCollin and Pastor Lindo, we ain't getting white. <laughs> that top notch business upstairs. <laughs> and they come to a mandate that somebody had to die for sin. True. That once they sin, they must die. And Jesus stepped forward and said, I give it all. Amen. I will give my life. Yeah. I will give all. For, for, for mankind and humanity with who, whom I created. And when Satan tells Jesus Christ through the other thief on the other side, get down from the cross. You're not a sinner because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Yeah. And you, Jesus, you are not a sinner, but you're supposed to get down. But God remind him, when you got came up of heaven, we had a meeting and we had to do something called mercy. Amen. That mercy says, though the person don't deserve it, they deserve it. I'm going to step in in their behalf and die and, 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 and work on their behalf. We call it mercy. Yes, yes man. Mercy. Yes. I said, this is mercy. What is that? 
He says it's something that woke up with something called grace. Grace and mercy. I said, said how long it lasts? And Jesus says, my mercy endureth forever. So I have to leave him alone. And the thief on the wreck says, oh my father, remember me when thou cometh in paradise. Mercy. Mercy. Thank God for mercy today. I thank God for mercy. I could do some time ago. Uh, a lady policeman, she reported about near about five times. Or yeah. oh, attempted to report me or stop me. I would have said, Lucy, join me. This lady stopped me. I'm so and so officer. Put out your, your disc and license. I tell you, in, in the office, he said, if you don't get to me that's 24 hours, you will hear from me. Right. I ran up right quick, got it, give her. So I said, well, she's in St. Lucy. The next time I drive, we're going to St. James, they're going all up St. George. I said, well, she can never get here. When I get my lyrics, I said, well, like the same police woman. I said, well, yes, you're the commissioner of police. Are you all about who you got along with? Oh, God, please, you're in Northern Division, you're down there. He said, what's she all about? And she put information again, I give her again. She said, right, go ahead, Mr. Bone, but I think she's never near real good. <laughs> Boy, don't spring back down, I want to come from baptism. I come and go on straight across the highway, right there, I don't want to turn left, go on, I want to come back. Right turn, go on across the right hand side, right behind me, and I go on to Dickens pretty fast, believing that the body ain't going to know what it is, but you, they behind me, and they, and the car stop, and the police went there and said, Good afternoon, Mr. Boy. <laughs> As he said, do you remember me? I said, do I remember you? <laughs> the same woman again. I had to ask her, she got a husband? <laughs> I know she knows I'm married. <laughs> Everybody called the woman turn up. I can't understand the thoughts. She was like, no city north. St. George East. I know folk don't speak that on. What's she all about? So one day I was in Bridgestone going from around the road on the boat. Going down to the side road to go to Robert Street. Just drop up a tender at the, the Urban Development Commission. This is able to rob a street that time, just behind the central bank. And as I got by the stoplight, by, 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 by going down, by in front of the transport board, going down the road, straight now near to my destination, I saw a police woman. I said, Oh, oh, what that is she? And I met her right turn. I said, Are you passing by she? I was in the left lane. I put on the real lane. And my head, Poo, 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 what are you doing? And when I get to that, I Lord, you just turn it like green. So sad, so sad. I cross the road. Cross the road. And when you look at my mirror, I see you looking so low. I put it here, go on. I don't want someone no more. This one follow me all about. Praise the Lord. She has no, she, she loves me. She loves me. He put him up five times. So you can't compromise. I thank God for mercy. And God gives you mercy. I went to court and the master extend mercy. Amen. So you understand what Jesus offered on Calvary. Amen. So God is saying today, my friends, repent. Give him a chance. And I say, come and be be be. Be be does not mean blackberry. It means be baptized. Amen. Come and be baptized today. And God can pull you off of the ships of this world. Some are on the ships of jewelry. My God can take it off today. Some are on the ships of makeup and a rouge. God can take it off today. Some is on the ship of shack up. For years and years you're shacking up. All the man is promising you yes next week, next month, next year. That will never happen because you got a bad attitude. Get the attitude of next. You never get the real thing next, 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 next. God will bring you off a, a ship of alcoholism. He will put down the bottle and take up the Bible. God can bring you off a ship of Sabbath breaking. You can break away today in the mighty name of Jesus. But all you have to do first is to come up, my friends, make that walk, and give Jesus a chance in your life. I'm happy today to say you can keep the commandments of God. You get up and get on the ship of Jesus. Amen. And what about this ship? This ship is not run by Pastor Tom, the executive secretary of the East Caribbean Conference. He's just uh, on the shepherd of Jesus. He's just an official. This ship, rather, is the whole law of God. Amen. 
because this weather gives the ship guidance. So the Ten Commandments are in place today in this ship. It tells them when you're lying. It tells them when you're adultery. This ship is the holy ship. This ship's cargo is here is, are the patience of the saints. It's them that keeps the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. This ship captain is not Pastor Danforth. This ship captain is the captain of the horse, Christ Jesus. I thank God today, this ship destination is not Dalky. This ship destination is a new heaven and a new earth where there be no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more pain because the former things have passed away. I'm happy to be a part of this ship. This is a good ship, my friends. It has a wonderful destination in Jesus, the Holy God. Oh, this ship. And this rubble, like I tell you, is the commandments of God. I'm happy for the ship. This ship is not controlled by man. It's controlled by God himself. And ladies and gentlemen, this ship is not a buyer ship. The Bible says, oh, who are willing to come? The Bible says this ship accepts all those who repent of their sins and, and, and forgive and God will forgive them of their sins and they can come and be blessed by God. Yeah. This ship is, hallelujah, a holy ship. Yeah. Thank God today, Jesus is in control. Because if God gives some of us Adventist for control, they trouble. But all these special people go to heaven and born won't make it. Mm. Because they talk straight. Thank God that God is in control. Amen. Because like I say, salvation was a thing Amen. that money could buy. Francis will live. Roy Lee will live. Pastor yeah. McCollum will live, 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 live. But since it is so, born can live too. Because they're free. And thank God it's free. God said, come and buy food before money. Because salvation is free. And I thank God today for Calvary because he washes our sin away and he gives us a new lease on life. Amen. New lease on life. Verse 4. So turn it back down. Verse 4. 4 is after 3. And then we got five. But the Lord sent that great man. Uh -huh. You see, God in charge of the elements. Into the sea. Let's go read up. And there was a mighty tempest a in mighty the sea. Tempest. So that the ship was like to be broken. Like to be broken. Sometimes the church will look as though it's going to break. But stay inside. Because the captain is Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. Verse 5. I'm going to go fast because the caliber of my Go Verse 5. Yes. Then. Then the mariners were afraid. We're afraid. And cried every man unto his God. His God. And cast forth the weirs the that were in the ship into the sea. Into the sea. To lighten it of them. But Jonah, Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship. Bingo. And he lay and was fast asleep. So there's trouble in the house. But the man who God talk to sleep in. Mm. You see, sin has a way of putting to sleep. When the vital point is there. So now the ship is in trouble 